at this time, I would like to invite Ms. Sue Tabal Yamaguchi of SUV Expressions. And uh, Sue was our hostess for the tour on the island of Oahu. Sue, as I, and I'm so happy to know her, Sue Tabal Yamaguchi, AFD EMC. She has some European uh, study as well. So she's a well-versed designer uh, uh, extraordinaire. She is also a beautiful wedding and event designer and uh, has a lot of people look, you know, she's a very sought after designer. She has wonderful ideas. We've seen some iconic, beautiful pictures of her work in her Instagram. Uh, and so look it up, Suvi Expression. So Sue, so do you ever have any downtime you're so busy? Let me ask you that. <laughs> I try to, I try to, um, at night maybe. <laughs> So I can like watch my Korean drama well, and kind of detox a little bit. <laughs> well, that's good to know because you are a hardworking woman and uh, we're thrilled to, to share with everyone your beautiful video of what happens on Oahu, Oahu with flowers and tropicals um, that you have a hand in. So let's, let's watch the video. Yeah, let's watch it. Aloha and welcome to the island of Oahu. My name is Sue Tabal Yamaguchi and we are here at the Lion Arboretum in Manoa. And with me I have Dr. Tessie Amari. With me also is Tim Kresig. He is the horticulturist here at the Lion Arboretum. And he's going to be taking us around the property and show us some amazing plants and um, things what they do here. How long has the um, Arboretum been uh, in operation? About a hundred years now, yeah. It dates back to the days of the Sugar Planters Association, yes. Wow. So the collections come from all over the world? Come then. from all over the world, yes. My predecessors traveled all over the world and collected these uh, different plant collections from various botanical gardens and did some plant breeding themselves to help to develop some of these varieties that we see here. More of our fireball tea. You can see how the light level affects the coloration on the teas. The ones that are in fuller light are quite a bit more colorful. And we, here we have one of our greenhouses where we do some of our propagation and growing of some of our collections. So let's take a look inside. All right, so here's one of our several greenhouse facilities at Lion Arboretum where we propagate and grow a variety of tropical ornamentals including some of the teas that you see right here. We also hold germplasm of kalo and we have over 600 species of palms in our living collections here at Lion Arboretum. 600, one of the largest collections in the nation. And this is how they germinate? Yeah, this is how they first start to germinate. Some of them are, are quite large and get a very big seedling started off, and some are much smaller. These are actually Hawaiian perchardia here, one of our native Lo'ulu palms. Nice. Yeah, and so our collection serves as a germplasm um, for researchers and for plant breeders, and so we care for the collection and uh, make it available to folks like Dr. Amore who are interested in doing breeding and development work with some of these beautiful plants that we have here. Yeah, variegated raphis, uh-huh. Yep. So we offer some of our plants for uh, the public as well at our biannual plant sales that we host here at Lion Arboretum where we invite local nurseries from around Oahu to come and sell their plants and their products. And we work to uh, release new and interesting varieties of tropical ornamentals at our plant sales as well. Yeah, that's a uh, thatch palm, Cocothrinax. And these take a long time to grow. So I actually started these when I first started as horticulturist here in 2019. So those oh. are three years old, believe it or not. Three years? Yeah. 
Whereas another one like this, you know, this is only like six months old. So it just depends on the type of plant we're growing. Some are very fast growing, some are very slow growing, as, as you know, as nursery men and women. This is just a new leaf? Yeah, that's just the pigment of the new leaf. Quite a few of our palms have really beautiful red or burgundy coloration with the new leaves like that. It's so really attractive. Yeah, it gets is. even nicer once it gets bigger. So, yeah. yep. And it's a rare plant too. It is indeed, that's yeah. Amazing. So this particular accession dates back to 2005, but I like to say many of the plants in our collection are much older than I am. So. We have over a hundred different varieties of tea in our collection that date back to the 1970s. So mm, that's, that's a lot of work to maintain too. Yes, it is. Yeah, we have about 200 acres worth of grounds here where we maintain many of the collections mm -hmm. as well as our greenhouse facilities like this one here. Some endangered species as well. We are permitted to work with over three dozen endangered native Hawaiian plants in our greenhouse and grounds collections. Some are close to extinct and uh, so we work with the laboratories and our Hawaiian rare plant program here to help to preserve and conserve those species that are on the brink of extinction. You can see we like to maintain very high humidity while our cuttings are getting established and producing roots have some ohia seedlings here as well. Yeah, yeah, that's wow. one from Ken Leonhardt actually. So oh. we've acquired quite a few of uh, Ken Leonhardt's different uh, varieties of aglaonema and, and various other tropical plants over the years. We have some tropical uh, rhododendron cuttings here. This is one thing we're gonna be Focusing on producing more of, we have some beautiful varia type rhododendrons in our collection. So we're working on establishing effective propagation protocols for them so we can get them out a bit more and, and distribute them through our plant sales. Look, there's more clarinervium. Yes. Yeah. Gosh. So the clarinerviums don't have the markings. The marks yet. Not yet. Way. Yeah, they develop them as, as they mature and grow with age, they they get that really nice venation on them, but it is quite variable amongst the seedling batch. So it okay. is, you know, something that would be worth selecting and, and developing for that really beautiful foliage in Anthurium clarinervium. They're pretty slow growers. They are, yeah. How would you guys like to go out onto the grounds and see some more of our collections? Yeah. All right, oh. right this way. So as you can see, we are in a rainforest here in the back of Manoha Valley. And this is our upper lawn section of the Lion Arboretum, where we have an assortment of beautiful foliage plants, like some of the teas that you see here. We also have some very interesting anthurium species in our collections, and a variety of other palm trees, as you can see. But I just love the variety of shape and color and the different tea collections that we have here. So a lot of these were developed by local breeders decades ago. Charles Nii and Iwao Shizumu and David Urian. So we've been lucky to work with them and amass this collection that we can display and share here at the Lion Arboretum. And then this one right here that has this nice variegation, it stays a bit smaller. This one's called Mauna Kea Mini. So many of these have names that are associated with Hawaii and the places or people that help to develop them here. So a lot of them have connections with, with Hawaii and their names are, are reflected. So reflect they stay that. this small? They do stay that small, Gosh. yes. It's a nice one as well. Yeah. It's beautiful. Gosh here so from the tiny little princess tea that we saw in the greenhouse which was barely bigger than six inches to this massive negra tea here you just see the diversity and in, in shape and size in our tea collection so this is one of the biggest ones and it's really neat because the new growth starts off green and it even has a bit of variegation and then as it ages it gets this really beautiful dark burgundy purple color to it. So I would say the color in the tea varieties are mainly determined by light level, but you can definitely have 
a gradient in colors within a specific plant. And generally you're gonna have the lighter, brighter colors be on the new growth. And then as they age, they kind of develop more pigment and anthocyanins and they get the darker purples and browns and even some really uh, very dark uh, purple colors like these or dark red. So um, yeah, they'll definitely usually get darker colors with age, but light level definitely plays a huge part in um, how vibrant or colorful the teas are. And then this one is a really interesting one, not quite as attractive, but very unusual. And it might remind you the, the shape of the leaves, a little bit like corn perhaps, and it's actually called maize. <laughs> yep, like corn. So it's also a very tall one, um, kind of a bit lanky with the floppy leaves, a little bit of pink in there, but this one is called maize. Thank you for taking the time to show us around the Lion Arboretum. I mean, it's absolutely fabulous. And, absolutely. My pleasure. You know, it's incredible. I, you know, we only think that there is certain amount of tea leaves, but just walking in a small area, mm -hmm. you'll see so many varieties, tea leaves, anthuriums. I mean, you name it. This place is an oasis yep. for plants. So mm -hmm. I know that the Lion Arboretum has plant sales. How, how do people find out about it or how, how can they get like one of the first dibs on the plants? Sure, yeah. Well, our website, so visit UH Lion Arboretum, has a lot of information about different events and classes that we offer up here at Lion, as well as our biannual plant sales. They are by reservation only and the reservation opens up approximately one month before the sale. So there's mm -hmm. one in the spring and one in the fall. Yeah, and, and we typically have about 20 varieties of cut tea that are available at our plant sales. So no kidding. some of the ones that we saw today might be available for purchase at our sale. That's exciting Great. to know. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tim. <laughs> yeah, it's thank you for nice. joining me today. And uh, I hope you all can come and visit Lion Arboretum and explore the collections for yourself. So we are here now at Magoon on the island of Oahu, and I'm here with Dr. Tessia Mori and Mark Tanoi. So this is the Magoon Greenhouse Facility where we do most of our research and development for the Anthurium and Orchid Breeding Program. We also use this place for um, instructional use, so students can learn hands-on how to grow and produce ornamental products. So classes are here. Are classes held here? are held here too. Nice. So we do. We have our um, germplasm collection, so we can make hybrids based on that. And so this is where all the excitement happens when you see the finished varieties that you work with and design with. This is where it all starts. So yesterday afternoon, we were at the Lion Arboretum looking at their um, plant collection, and we saw their extensive tea plant collection and we have worked with Tim collecting some of the plant materials so we have some of the um, cordillon varieties over here so that the students can use them for their um, projects so we've been able to use um, the connection the partnership with Lion Arboretum to enhance our education um, educational programs so, I don't know, I saw you brought in a collection of pinks, if you might want to use some of these. Oh, and this is the orange one. That's that the orange saw. glow that you saw yesterday. These are, I think this is Kawaii Beauty. Yeah, this is Kawaii Beauty and um, nice. so yeah. So these were um, materials we had collected in June of 2021 and then propagated over here so that we can use this for our instruction so that we can combine materials from Lion Arboretum with uh, orchids and anthuriums we develop here. 
So, Mark, do you have a favorite here? Um, yeah, you know, uh, one of these are actually one of my favorites here. I also like uh, Fire Fountain, which is on the back corner. I'm sure we'll take a look at that as well. But um, yeah, they offer a lot of different colors and, and it's hard to pick a favorite one though. Yeah, there's so many different varieties. These are so small, mm -hmm. look how small they are. The leaves, I think these are great for like boutonniere work or even little detailed work, I mean. And as Tim was mentioning, the light quality mm -hmm. affects the coloration. So I think these are all the same, but these are a little bit shaded and this one that gets more light comes out with a redder color. The tea leaves, they, they have a, people plant green tea leaves around their house for like a protection, right? Mm -hmm. And then you were saying something about the... Um, oh, medicinal Yeah, qualities. medicinal, yes. Yeah, so my grandmother-in-law used to say that you get the tea leaf and lay it on the bed and you put your um, child with a fever on top of the tea leaf and the tea leaf is supposed to draw the fever um, away from the, um, the infant. So I thought that was so cool when she mentioned the um, cultural usage of um, the green tea leaf. Yeah. And of course we see it in food. <laughs> right, right. Um, they cook with it and they also give it as a gift. That's right. Right? Uh, they wrap it up as an offering. I mean, so many different uses. Obviously not this size, but the bigger size. But just to see this size, you really don't see a lot of small tea leaves like this. It's really so perfect. I mean, for the bouquets now, you know, you can use all these little tiny strips and you don't have to cut them and shape them anymore. Even the smaller ones, I mean, again, with boutonnieres or corsage works or just little detail. Look how tiny this is, little detailed work. It's perfect. Next, I want to show you our um, Anthurium breeding program and let's go into our Anthurium house to see what's, yes, what's new and what we have here. This is exciting. Yes. Here we go. So we have some, well, we, some of the interesting, this is some of the red ones. I think when the designers came before, this was like, a, we used to call this the red Regina because the shape is like Regina, but right. it's red. But it does something funky once in a while. What? Yeah. What? I don't know what causes it, but once in a while you'll have, a, the spadex is separated. Right, that's what I noticed. <laughs> the, the color is gorgeous. I mean, just to see an anthurium with the spadex separated, Separate. I, I mean. Ethereum is the foliage, foliage right? right? The mm -hmm. colorful part is actually a leaf. Right, and the spadix is actually the, the true flower. The true flower. Mm -hmm. Right. That's gorgeous. Does the tip get more red? I think it gets more pronounced as it gets older. It's open, but as a... Um, as a, fr as oh. a cut flower? Yeah, we'll at this at stage. Now we'll look at the one that um, I think you were really interested when you came to visit and you said, oh, you know, this is a different white. We always have Hokuloa, right. but you wanted an alternative white. So let's go here. And what is this called? This is called White Lady. Oh, yes. <laughs> this is your White Lady. Isn't that gorgeous? I mean, seriously. Look at this. And uh, it, it gets really high, long too, long and straight. Nice stems. Yeah. Yeah. Nice stem. So that that's Sue. <laughs> no. There you go. Look how gorgeous she is. Yeah. And it has a little speck of green. Yeah. 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 I yeah. love green. So it is, and it's a clean green stem. Yeah. So. That is yeah. gorgeous. So this one, when we released it, there was not much interest, and then until you came, <laughs> we're like, oh, okay, that's. You, yeah. you, 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 you see some of that green on the back Backside, side, yeah. Because I saw some there. Yes. Look at this one. Is this the same? Oh, this is Centennial. Oh, this is the Centennial? Oh, look at that. And that definitely is like, empty, too. Yeah. yeah. But here you go, Miss Sue. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. But definitely, yes. This That's is a definite, high. yeah. We need more whites. <laughs> So I, th so I think because of your interest, we propagated more so that industry can grow more. 
Nice. So that's really when <laughs> your feedback, really, the designer's feedback really yeah. makes a big difference in what we do. I love that one. Thank you, Dr. Tessie and Mark for showing me <laughs> this incredible place. It's, it actually got me excited to see all these new varieties that you're testing out. And um, I think right now what we're gonna do is try to play with some of the uh, new varieties and make it into uh, something special for wedding celebrations. So here we are finally at the setup that we were preparing for at Magoon's. And this is our tablescape that we were working on. So this is for a bride, a small wedding. And she had a vision that she wanted flowers coming down. But then she changed her mind and then wanted to expand it a little bit more. So we were actually just planning to do one row of flowers but because she wanted it to feel like they were sitting underneath all these flowers, we came up with a, a grid on top. But this is actually what the arch is on top, which is just a single pole. So it's about a one inch pole. And we did just a, a light chicken wire, just one row there. And since we had the hanging heliconias, what I did up there was I crossed over the stalks and I tied them together so it made it stronger. So I created a grid which is like just which way um, facing all these different directions which made branches to come out further. And from there I laid some greenery on top of that. All the flowers that remember that we wired individually so they, the wire just goes up and we just hook it, right. right? We just hooked it, attached it to either the heliconia stems or the chicken wire or other parts, um, parts of the greenery. So it just made it very easy, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And some of it, we actually tied the orchids together. We crisscrossed to make like a saddle and we just laid them over and they're just laying down. I couldn't yeah. believe how simple it was. Very simple, yes. right? And you don't really see any of the wires or anything up there. No. Yeah. And also what we have up there, if you notice, um, is some of the bromeliads from David Chige. Yes. Aren't they gorgeous? They're gorgeous. They really make a statement up there. Mm -hmm. Something that's different that you normally don't see. And also hanging here are the orchids and the anthuriums that are from the UH lab. Yes. Can you tell us about? So we have the white uniwine mist. Which is here. Here, yes. And um, we have the purple uniwine, um, no, 
the two-tone uni white su supreme, the pinkish color is okay, the lavender. Uni lavender uh huh. Is uni white supreme, and the purple is Wally Murazani. Nice. What about the anthuriums? So for the anthuriums, we have here um, red tropic fire. We have um, the o pink obake kapoho velo. We have the pink Marian Seaforth and the pink Princess Aiko. And those are all created? At the at University of Hawaii. That's wow, right. Wow, that's fantastic. Aren't they beautiful? And we don't get to see our what we create in the breeding program in ways used this way. So it's really a great treat for us researchers to see how the products are used by the floral designers. On the bottom here, uh, Tessie and Mark, I had them just put flowers in vases, very simple. Two stems, one stems, some with greenery, some without greenery. And all the vases are very different. So it created all these different textures on the table. <clears throat> From there, we just laid it out. We added some candles, added some blooms on the tables, and then we placed our settings, which we have our place settings here that is embellished with the tea leaf, one of the tea leaves that we had on the line on Burrito Farm, correct? Yes. And so, can you remind me what the tea leaf name is? So this one was the ones uh, we already, we saw them at Lion Arboretum and then we collected cuttings from Tim. Right. And, and so this is Cameroon, which Cameroon. is a, a brown one. Right, so it, the Cameroon has a lot of different colors, which I thought matched perfectly because all of the colors here that we have, but I'm not sure if you can see them up close, but all these different colors lines in just a leaf. So Sue, I see we have some zinnias and dahlias in the arrangement. Yes, they are actually locally on Oahu and um, they are from Pacific Petals and they have allowed us to use, they, they actually grow this very, um, they're organic. Oh. They don't use any chemicals, but they're stunning. I mean, absolutely stunning. The colors, the variations, I mean, I love local, locally grown flowers. It's great. Yeah, and they go well with the tea leaf. Yes. <laughs> so what we have also on the table is all the, the flatware, and the dinnerware, the glassware from Moonlight Events Company. And they were gracious enough to uh, lend us all this, especially even the tables, the chairs. Um, we are at Kalai Aloha Estate, and the chairs and the property is from them as well. But I think this is um, something very nice, simple, very easy to do for anyone that wanted to do DIY. Everything was an open canvas that we could fill. I still remember where we were standing, and I always will. Well, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed. I really want to thank Dr. Tessie Amore, Mark Tanoi, the Kalai Aloha Estate here for allowing us to do this beautiful setup, Moonlight Events Company for all her beautiful tableware, Hefna, Hawaii Floriculture Nursery Association, the Lion Arboretum, and Magoons for allowing us to come onto their properties and share what we all have here to enjoy. Yeah. Aloha. Aloha. You're the feet.
Well, way we... to go, Sue. That was awesome. It was, wasn't it? It was great. Yeah, and Tessie and Mark, that, you guys are a team. Awesome. Definitely a team. It's so great to work with Dr. Tessie. I mean, I am so <laughs> honored. <laughs> we had so much fun. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. <laughs> Including <is>. getting drenched. <laughs> 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 and mosquitoes yeah. flying all over me. <laughs> yeah, this is actually yeah. um, a lot of fun. We're putting uh, yeah. a presentation and uh, education information, but we're having fun doing it, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And it's, it, and it's so awesome to be able to illustrate the, the, the team effort, you know, from, again, the breeder to the designer and really brainstorming how we can do this together and love it all together. I just love that. So thank you for the whole team for uh, really illustrating how beautiful that relationship is. All right. I agree. Well, we have a couple of questions here from our um, chat room. Uh, the first question is, how many years does it take to breed anthurium and tea? And what is involved? Would you like to tackle that, Tessie? Sure. For anthurium, I can at least let you know that it takes about 14 years for now to develop a new variety. Wow. Because when we get, the pollination takes about six months and then it takes about two years from seed to get the seedlings to flower. And then we'll do our selections. If something's interesting, we ask the designers now, is it worth cloning? And then when they give us the thumbs up, then we'll start cloning it. And depending on how easy it is to clone, it will take about two to three years to get enough plant materials to test in the field with our cooperators. And if it's successful, they'll test for the entire cycle. So it's about six to seven years. Then if it's really good, then we'll go ahead and clone again so that it can be, um, the selection can be grown at a uh, larger scale. Mm. So it takes a lot of work and it takes a village to develop a new variety. Okay, and what about um, tea leaves? Um, since I'm a grower, I'm familiar with some of the uh, propagation methods, but um, let's hear your take on tea leaves. So for tea leaf, um, I don't hybridize tea leaf myself, but um, in my other classes, we visited some nurseries and they talk about how they have plants that are close to each other and they just let the seeds germinate um, when it's ripe. And then from then, the nice thing about tea leaf is what you want to see is already in the seedling. So you don't have to work, wait like two years to see what it looks like. And then from whatever looks interesting, then they'll propagate um, normally by canes. They're um, veg they vegetated by the cane, yeah. Yes. yeah. So yes. Um, have you uh, planted seeds from a tea leaf, from the tea leaves that you've received? No, we just get made cuttings from the ones we received from Lion Arboretum. Because I understand from uh, our next door neighbor, Uncle Howard Yamamoto, who developed uh, that pink torch the pink torch, mm -hmm. he uh, hybridized a lot of different teas and he used to take the, the seeds and plant them and they would mutate into something else from that, that was different. So he used to cross, he used to pollinate the tea leaves, believe it or not. Okay. You know how they can go to seed, they can, go, they can flower right, right before they go to seed. Mm -hmm. So that might be something to consider if we want to come out with a new variety of tea leaves for our fashion industry, right? To get people like he told me and Sue all excited again. <laughs> yes. So Johnny, keep an eye for seeding um, seeding tea plants in your uh, in okay your property. Okay. And uh, you can plant the different ones next to each other because you don't know what will visit the flowers, right? <laughs> right. Right. Um, we have another question. How well do those tea hold up in arrangements? Are they Pliable. Pliable? What that mean? They mean do are the leaves pliable? I think they mean. Or uh, well, how, how well do those tea hold up in arrangements? So, my question is: Are they talking about the leaves 
or are they talking about the tops? Because a lot of time we put the tops in arrangements well, too, right? If they were to put the tops in arrangements, and if you're doing it in a chicken wire where there's water, or if you're doing it in an oasis, if you leave it in there for uh, a period of time, you'll notice that roots are actually growing. So that's how you can actually replant the tea leaf. And that's one way of, of using and reusing. The tea leaf itself, if you were to cut it, it is pliable. Um, tea leaf has many uses. We, mm. we can boil them. We can iron them. Um, freeze them. You can freeze them. Exactly. Microwave but in your arrangement, them. Yeah, you can <laughs> microwave. So in your arrangements, like for me, I usually like to curl it um, into my arrangements to hide like some of the mechanics in there. But I also like to use it in the arrangements as a stem. And they do last quite a, a long time, actually. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful product tea leaves especially after seeing all these different varieties that were showcased earlier mm. in the day i had no idea how many uh, different <laughs> no. varieties of tea leaves there are i mean so can i ask sue a question of about course. uh you know i saw that she was very intrigued over at lions and arboretum with those little tops the little clusters <clears throat> what are things that's going through your mind as you're looking at that because obviously you were being inspired by the beauty of that kind of that Kind of structure <laughs> there was a lot of things going through my head during that time i mean <laughs> talking about like like how to use it in bouquets how to use it in corsage works but also um using in european designs how because everything is is um individual right they're either wild uh, wired individually or they're placed or glued individually and they for me in my head as they make really nice textures. I mean, when you see the tips of the different tea leaves in there and the different colors, I mean, you can just make a really nice pattern with just the, the, the tiny tea leaves. I mean, I've never seen so many different varieties of small tea leaves and they stay small, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, we see the big ones, the, the regular green ones, and I call it the, the green with the white stripes, but when you're actually seeing all of these different rides, like the reds, I mean, mm -hmm. it's gorgeous. I, I don't know how mm -hmm. many we saw, but it was a lot. I, yeah, I, 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 yeah, it's a lot. Also, um, our friend, uh, Mr. Philip Brulota, he does amazing work with weaving and he uses a lot of tea leaves. He, he will split them and fan them out mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just, Curl them this way and that way. I'm sure you guys do that too, but I, I've noticed that it's, it's, it's like a miracle plant. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Okay, another well, question. You tell me, go ahead. No, no, I, I was just going to say that the Hawaiians have really developed a lot, you know, with, with your culture, a lot to do with that specific plant material. It's amazing. Great. It's a real study. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, as a working wedding florist, can you share with us your most removable, oh, memorable, memorable MacGyver Ma moment? Memorable, memorable <laughs> MacGyver moments. Oh, memorable MacGyver moment. Gosh, <laughs> I use MacGyver a lot because when you are always on site. Wait, 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 one second. Can you explain to our guests what you mean by MacGyver? Because um, I don't know what you mean by MacGyver. Okay, so <laughs> when I say MacGyver, it, it means um, coming up with a different plan. And uh, so like the, 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 the program that I did was initially it was set for just a straight line. But because we, we made it up where the bride wanted to sit underneath um, all these hanging flowers that was MacGyvering and making up another way of creating what she wants in the end. So creating the grid so that way it extends the flowers instead of going one um, in one row. Hmm. So that's, that's Would you MacGyver. say it's a creative changing direction? It is a creative changing direction. That's and what Mac MacGyver is, yeah. a creative so, change in yes. direction. Oh, interesting. Right. My, my most memorable <laughs> one was when, oh, there's a lot of them. Um, <laughs> um, I think it was when they wanted more flowers. 
and we had to make it look like it was a lot of flowers. So it's, it's using all of the stems that we have very creatively, extending all the stems of the flowers and making it look like the style that she wanted. And it actually came out gorgeous. It was- I'm sure it did. It was one of the prettiest weddings. Um, are there any other comments or questions from any of us at this time? You told me, do you have any more uh, comments? So what is the wedding season looking like uh, in 2023? And what are the brides looking for in your neck of the woods? Oh, well, 2023 is quite busy. Um, in Hawaii, weddings happen 365 days out of the year. Uh, because we have the climate, the right climate here. Yes, there are rainy days, um, and yes, there are, are seasons that have storms, but we've always seemed to manage to find another location. Uh, but the, the trend now that I'm seeing is it's a lot of the tropical nouveaux. A lot of people want to use the local flowers, and they love that. Um, definitely a lot of whites. But I think a lot more color is going to happen next year, um, definitely, because people are open as far as different types of flowers. And when they see, you know, like the rattlesnakes, um, they're just so intrigued that they want to use it, you know. And in different foliages, too. A lot of the, the foliages are now being incorporated <clears throat> into the weddings and, and how creative you can get manipulating the foliages. As well. So would you say that the brides are a little bit more adventurous with the use of tropical flowers? Yes, I think so. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, yeah, my brides are. And, and I love that they give us the freedom creativity to, to explore and say, hey, what about this? You know, and they love it. So I think well, that's what it our... certainly helps for people like you, Sue, to be showing and posting all the great ideas that you have in your MacGyver moments. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that then itself gives a uh, great, uh, you know, just in inspiration for the bride. So I think that's it's awesome that you continue to uh, forge forward with some new ideas and 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 and, and the selections of the new flowers that that Tessie's breeding. And I, I think the future for um, flowering with tropicals is really, really, really great because we're all working together to make it stronger. Right. And to be able to have an input as far as creating different types of colors and um, textures and sizes, you know, with the anthuriums, especially the, the shapes and the length of it. I mean, um, I know that one of my friends had mentioned yellow anthurium, so we're still trying. <laughs> oh, I wish. <laughs> well, um, isn't this what Hefner Wedding Celebration is all about? Absolutely. To share Absolutely. tropical flowers from Hawaii worldwide, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. And we're proud and to be part of it. Yeah, inspiring through experimentation and doing some really cool things. And I think it begins here. It begins with this set of designers that we have. Uh, the island designers, we love them so much um, and all that they do to contribute. And of course, all the guest designers who have had the opportunity to play with it and they share with us what they see. So, yeah, it's really cool. It's, it's a real consolidation of great mm -hmm. things with great people. So thank you for all you do, Sue. Oh, you do a you. lot. No, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. And thank you to Dr. Tessie. She worked so hard to make things happen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We love, we love Tessie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm curious, Dr. Tessie, what is your favorite flower? Or what favorite oh, that's a Good one. Yeah. Good you question. know, an equal <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> I love flowers both temperate and tropicals. But of course, my heart is um, I work with tropicals every day. So it's it's every day it's a little bit different. And sometimes it can be even tropical foliage. I get really excited about it. So I'm equal opportunity. I love them both. <laughs> okay. Great answer. We'll, we'll, we'll let you. Uh, Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> well, um, we're going to move on to our next guest at this time, and we would like to thank you, Sue. Thank you. And Tessie. Thank you. For sharing thank with you, us. Tessie. And have a great day. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys.